Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the finest Dawn of War Soulstorm cast this side of East Yorkshire. And today we have got a 1 vs 1 on Deadly Fun Archaeology. Playing on the left hand side as the Elder, we have got Bad Frenetic. And playing on the right hand side as the Dark Elder, we have got Yang Wen Li. Yang Wen Li will be opening up with, with double Mandrakes, a Plasma Generator and a Dark Foundry. Whereas the Eldar are going to go for a couple of Guardians, Fleet of Foot Research, Aspect Portal with, I do believe, yep, some Rangers, and we have got some Plasma Generators on the go as well. It's quite exciting. Not often do you get to see the good Eldar versus the bad Eldar. Depending on which one you think is which, is all up to your own interpretation. You get a Slave Chamber over here. What is the purpose of this? Is, it, is this just... I don't know, but <laughs> some advanced Dark Eldar tactics, no doubt, I imagine. Unless, of course, it's to prevent some... Nope, got, I've, got, I've got no idea what that is there for, but I was gonna I was gonna talk about some tactics potentially between the Eldar and Dark Eldar, but this is uh, not doing me any favors in the brain department. That's okay though. Mandrake's gonna come over and maybe explain away this nonsense. Rangers are quite a good pick against the Dark Eldar, considering that the Dark Eldar really struggle with some um, infiltration detection early on in the game. Oh, that was for vision. They're gonna provide vision so the Mandrakes know which way to go. Right. Nope. I understand now, I understand the wicked ways of Dark Eldar are known unto me. But yes, yeah, so the Dark Eldar do struggle a bit with infiltration detection. They do have their global soul ability, but they do really struggle collecting souls in the early game. And Rangers do a fair bit of damage in the range department, especially against the infantry. Well, I mean, against heavy infantry, do very little damage, but light armor, like these Mandrakes, no mass, no pass for them, losing two models there quite quickly already. Torch Slave is going to attempt to escape from them. Will he be able to escape that? <laughs> Managing to quickly shuffle away when he loses his morale. Aliens will come over, although these guys are now infiltrated, so they'll just be on by. Like the... Like the, like the ki without care in the world, some, some would say. The Tower of Loving is firmly in position now. Go, oh, sub, sub. Can I get over how absolutely mind-melting that was early on in the game? Yes, yeah, so the Torch Slavery survives back in the green health. And the Rangers are just free to maneuver around and do whatever they want to do. Taking some pot shots at these Mandrakes. Aliens that will see them. Now got their piercing eyes on them. And so opening fire and engaging in close combat as quickly as humanly possible. Thankfully the Rangers have got some fleet of foot, but the Hellions themselves are quite speedy. Rangers attempted to get into melee combat. Or at least trying to keep these Mandrakes away from the strategic point. I'm going to go for a decap. Little bit of aggression, or a fair bit of aggression from Frenetic here. One single Mandrake trying to do it all on his own. Rangers can't quite get the distance away from these Hellions. Might be a bad job all around. These guys also have a little, a little I mean, ping on them. Does stuff I imagine. Looks like it's breaking up the, or what do you call it, the, the infiltration form by. Well, it's as they have gone back invisible, and these guys' piercing eyes have faded away. But the moment they stop being chased around, turn around and give them a, a volley in the face. With these Hellions, a little bit more armor than your regular, uh, what you called, Mandrakes. So it'll take a little bit more damage to do. Mandrakes over here are going to engage with these Guardians. Yellow on teal blue, by the looks of things. I've got some Dark Reapers for Frenetic over here. So not going to overly commit on the Rangers too much. He has, he has reinforced them quite a lot, actually. And wow, 40 blue and 5 green. He's going to slow down his tier 2 capabilities quite considerably. Spot platform going on over here to prevent any counter assault. And the Viva Jet bikes are on the way. Rangers will be doing nothing against them. But a couple of Dark Reapers might be able to sort them out. Also got the Guardians still on the go here. Doesn't look like they've gone for any kind of grenades or anything like that. After all, I mean, there's not, not much point in them going for grenades in this kind of matchup. Especially if the uh, Dark Eldar open up for their Reaver jet bikes. I don't think their grenades tend to do much damage to the jet bikes. We are seeing a push forward over on the southern side. Mandrake's not really getting much use in this game at the moment. Primarily going to be used for capping, as opposed to maybe one up against other factions. The Reaver jet bikes, especially if they can make use of this heavy cover here, will certainly cause some issues. Especially when properly supported. If those Hellions can keep those Dark Reapers on the move, then the Jetbikes can just focus on these squishies for now. But second squad of Dark Reapers coming down, so... Yeah, it does seem that these guys, especially now that has got 10 squad cap, fully capped up, 
It's a lot of money that's spent on all this stuff. Mandrake's getting shot down one at a time. I imagine you're probably... Are you in tier two? You've gone for your homunculi. Can't quite tell. No, you have not gone for your tier two yet. Never mind me. Good economies are 92. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Poor Burns thing have been surrounded. Well, those jet bikes. And shot down quick, sharpish. Dark Reapers. Again, trying to keep their distance, but thankful there's one squad over here doing what they can. A second Bunsinger teleports in, manages to get that support platform up, and away they are scared. As we've seen before, support platforms, especially when they get their decal and upgrade, amazing against the Reaver jetpacks, especially because they do AoE damage, and even on the very cusp of the AoE damage, can one-shot an entire Reaver jetpack, so definitely worth getting a couple of those guys around. But we're going to see a plasma generator being popped next to them as well. Just for the additional protection. Torch slave attempted to repair the jet bikes. This one jet bike though needs some serious repairs. Just one headshot taking that guy out. And now the Tower of Loving over here has been shot up. And Oh, what, have you got words on you? I'm sure that's, that's friendly Russian words of encouragement. That's what I assume. Monkey Light is out. This torch dampy will be able to slow people down, which will be quite useful. Prevent or put, help prevent the rangers from running away. Can also detect infiltration. I do believe double Dark Reapers though. Not yet got the Dark Reaper Exarch. So they won't be doing extra damage as of yet, but still potential. Reaper Jetback kind of taken the, the wrong way around. Where are you going, young man? It's going everywhere, apart from the correct way. Third squad of Reaver Jetbacks, another support platform there. So mine went blank, I was like, what, what, are you, what are you? But no, I can, I can see you. I'm not that blind yet. Listening Shrine over here will be able to resist these Reaver Jetbacks quite nicely. But then again, it does seem like yeah, they've gone for their damage output upgrade. So they're going to do all right. Going to do all right. But not so all right when these entire forces start coming down over on this side. Another spare Reaver Jetbike coming over. For assistance. Critical comments on 92 and 30 compared to 86 and 20. Tier 2 about to finish for the Dark Eldar. And we've got Tier 2 about halfway done for the Eldar. So slight tech advantage for the baddies on the right hand side. Hall of Blood being built up. And the demonic corruption research on the go. So Mandrix making a comeback potentially in this game. Maybe. I'll have to wait and see. I'm not, not sure how, how it's going to work out. I mean... It's going to be a bit difficult to get those Mandrakes up and running. But then again, they are supported by a hell of a lot of Reaver Jet Bikes. Here they come in, swarming over the forces of the Dark Eldar. Of the El regular Eldar, sorry. Using that heavy cover to maximum advantage. One, in fact, a couple of squads of Dark Reapers going the wrong way. Also using that... Morale sapping global ability that the Dark Elder have access to. These guys are having a, for a world of hurt at the moment. We focus fired. Quick, sharpish. Two models dead. Three models soon to die. Gonna be auto reinforced. Well, not auto reinforced, but reinforced best they can. It does seem like. Was that full squad wipe? Well, it's two squad wipes either way. Torture ramp. Slowing them down quite considerably. Amunculus taking a lot of damage there for it, but you know what? Two squad wipes, what's that? That's. 210 blue money. That's not even including their reinforced models that they've lost as well, so huge losses for the Eldar in that engagement there. Massive mistake bringing them down this side rather than running them over on this side. Going to go for some scourges for additional ranged fire and a raider as well in case the Eldar get up to any um, vehicle shenanigans. I assume it's going to be... Oh, I mean... Uh, Teleporting tank, not teleporting tank, jumping tank, whatever you call that one. I always forget what it's called. You know the one I'm on about. Falcon grav tank, that's the one. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's like deja vu. But yeah, actually, you know what? I've never really seen these guys been used to specifically to snipe down buildings. It's always been to take out units, but you know what? When you've, you've massed them out this amount, and you've given them the ranged upgrade, do I do a bad job? There we go, Falcon Grav Tank, I know what it's called. It's not like I've been doing this for nearly two years now. 
Oh god, I've been doing this for nearly two years. Does that make you feel old? Makes me feel old. More torture slips coming out. Witch Call Arena on the way. Yeah, we tend to see that once the Reaver Jet bikes start falling off, which should be anywhere now, really, the uh, scare just come out. Uh, some witches usually come out as well. Oh, poor homunculus, he's, he's dead. And the moment that that Falcon Grav Tank gets killed, Scare just jumps straight over. Another Dark Reaper squad being focused down. But a Viper able to fire away at those Reaver Jet bikes. But to try and reposition itself away from the Scourges. Doesn't take a lot to kill them. But the AoE damage from that Viper, killing a good couple of those guys. Nice stuff, and actually the Scourge is now outnumbered, are going to fall back, so a bit of a bodged assault from the Dark Eldar there. Really going to snake its way in. It's got no friends there, but it's quite low armoured as well. So it's not going to resist this incoming fire at all, really. I'll be honest, I, I always think that the vehicles of the Dark Eldar are lacking quite considerably. The Weaver Jet Bikes are fantastic in Tier 1. And the early stage of tier 2. At the moment tier 2.5 hits. Kind of, it's all a bit shite. Even though Ravagers later on in the game are not amazing. It's all about the witches. The witches are the warp beasts. Potential dice of destruction if you're feeling really fancy. And of course the mighty Talos. Who can forget about the mighty Talos? I can't. Never forget a never regret a mum spaghetti. Yeah, the jugs, uh, space jugs have been popped. And the witches are going to charge forward. Falcon Grav Tank's falling left, right and centre, but this one is remaining firm. But to be used to reposition those dark reapers. But the raider will come forward. Landing on the floor, breaking the morale of the rangers. Rangers still alive in this match. Quite incredible to see that these guys have been thrown away. You tend to see these guys just been lost in... Trading some sort of strategic or critical location, but no, we kept alive. A protracted engagement here as another Viper comes over and sees if it can take on a couple of Reaver Jet bikes. But scared away by the Scourges. Cannot take many shots from those Dark Lancers at all. So the positioning needs to be on point. Really for both players, to be honest. Both players have got. Access to a lot of high DPS but fragile units. So whoever can engage the best, whoever can reposition the best, I do believe in this kind of fight will be coming out on top. Reavers jumping straight forward, or at least moving straight forward. Which is trying to capitalize on cracking down on that Falcon Grav Tank. Do you have a raider? I'm not quite been able to get some shots off on there. Oh, we've got an Archon. Hello, Archon. How are you doing? He's going to come over here. Viper being seen, losing a fair whack of health. Yeah, I mean, the Archon, he's got his Crucible of Malediction. Amazing ability, able to stun an enemy while also make it fire upon its own friends and family. And of course, he's got his other stun ability, so trying to manoeuvre away from an Archon is quite difficult if you're trying to be manoeuvrable and flexible. So a, a nice addition, I would say. Whether the Eldar are going to do something, anything similar, doesn't seem like they're going to try and go for the Farsia. And to be fair, Farsia are quite fragile. If they were going to use that, they'd have to be very careful. The Archon has got space to play with, considering it's got bodyguards. And the Incubi are quite tough customers as well. I'm um, now with his splintery cannony doodad thingy. Malediction. Upon these boys. But not sure if this that was the best time to use it. As there was not much follow up over there. But I suppose it kind of like. Made the Falcon Grav Tank go away a little bit. But you need to be careful of those abilities. The cooldown from isn't incredibly long. But you still want to leave them up for when you actually need them. Rather than just throwing them around willy nilly. Jetpack's going to fall back. Raider. Skidding along the ground. Economy's coming out at the moment at 98 and 50 compared to 98 and 40. So, quite a small blue money game, but a lot of economy in the green department. Seems that everyone will be focusing on keeping the units alive, giving them the, the upgrades that they so need. 
Raider right, uh, jumping on the backside, not quite getting that AOE morale damage off, but well, Grav Tank gonna re re retreat all the way back home. Got support platforms, one with a D cannon. Be very careful around those Reaver Jet bikes. Actually, the Viper just sniping these guys up one at a time while well, we decide to actually fire at them. And a constant shower of shuriken fire from these Dark Reapers. What's the situation on this side? We've got some Guardians capturing the critical locations. So far, no one's got any uh, countdowns on the go, but these Vipers are actually going to cause these Dark Elders some serious issues. Yeah, okay, fair play there. Engage it down here. They might potentially be able to get a fairly decent engagement off on here, but all the while this is going on, the Vipers on the northern side will be killing some stuff in the Dark Eldar base. Also using a lot of soul stuff as well. Combat drugs, crucible of malediction, as well as that acid coercion. Corrosion? However, however one would say that word. They are now going to fall back. Vipers actually not really... Capitalising on that distraction. But I suppose that the witch squads were there as well. But Burnsing is repairing them. Last of the Reaver Jet Bikes I do believe have now been destroyed. Is that the last of the Reaver Jet Bikes? Seems like it. Now the Vipers are repositioning themselves over down on this side. See a tasty plasma generator for them to snack on. And the Rangers. Still alive. Gotta appreciate the tenacity. One, one poor scourge getting rocketed in the face. But managing to actually snipe out that Viper. He gets the last laugh. So that Viper just realised how low health he was. Would have survived. And we've got a soul, soul burn singer person having his or her crotch harvested. For the good of Kamara. Kamar, or Kamara. Camembert. If you want to have a cheese themed Dark Eldar City. Got War Beast there. Hungry little puppers. Looking for a Beast Master. As well as some extra friends. Although the economy for the Dark Eldar, yeah, they're, they are on Fredbear money at the moment. We're very careful. Well, the Guardian's being nommed super duper quick. Raider over here, not really contributing that much to the fight, I feel. Don't think much is going on. Happy space dust being given to the warp beasts. But it's going to be really hard to keep up with these Falcon Grav Tanks. If Frenetic is able to keep up his micro with his in and out shaking it all about with these Dark Reapers, it'll be super difficult. Going to see a Raven from Yang Wenli. Not sure where the Raven is. Oh, it's over here. Good against all sorts, really. But very fragile. Only 1,250 health. Even less than the Viper. He's going to come over here and see if he can do something. Over on this side, more Warp Beasts. Two squads. Now, I do believe that there's a two, two squad limit, if I'm not mistaken. That's what I'm going to run on the assumption of. And more anger, more fury. Wonderful. Malediction going on there. War beasts smell blood in the water. And with no time flat. Oh, we're going to get another one as well. Oh, it's just a case of if someone dies while that ability is on it, just auto cools down. That's quite useful if you ask me. It's quite useful indeed. And just the war beasts single handedly devouring all that's in their path. Viper manages to. Knocked them all on the backside, but doesn't really buy him much opportunity. And the Eldar, what's your counter against this? The Warp Beast are good against infantry, heavy infantry vehicles. I suppose the only thing really is going for some aircraft, but... Is the... Uh, oh, is it a Nightwing? Night Song? Is that particular aircraft good against these, these dogs, the heavy infantry? I don't think so. But I suppose better than not. Better than nothing. I'm going to see some warp spiders. But more warp spiders. Already got two squads. And pretty good for repositioning. Also quite a lot less micro, I feel. Whenever I'm playing as the Eldar, which is very rare. Because I very rarely play the game. 
for a second Raven, but shot out of the air. So I mean, he's trying to keep the distance away from the Archon, but he's not having it. He wants to give them the good old pimp slaps. And on this side, though, the Falcon, Grav Tank, and the Range Squad are taking care of business. So I mean, so long as they can survive, they will eventually outlive the Dark Elder just from having money alone. I mean, what kind of money have you got? I mean, not amazing reserves, but you've certainly got a bigger income overall. I could keeping those warp spiders in place, but not for long. And if they can teleport away, go on, lads, escape. Go while well, the going's good. No, never mind. Just gonna walk away. And the witches and beasts leave and be. For the top of that one again. More Falcon Grav tanks. Valiant support, or at least very much a distraction. And it does look like these guys are kind of like a dog chasing a, a bus at the moment. They're going from one thing to another, not really committing to kill something outright. Getting distracted from all ends. Over here, the witches are trying to chase around the rangers. Yeah, it does seem, although they haven't done that much, I mean, they've killed a couple of things. Killed a couple of economic buildings, at least distracted some of those witches for now. I mean, yeah, six, 68 and 18. Just some background sleuthing. But without that sleuthing, the Dark Elder would have been able to keep these warp beasts on the go. With 70 blue and 40 green, you've got to have a really, really strong economy to keep, especially two squads of war beasts fully kitted out at all times. Falcon Grav Tank over here. Gonna be munched and crunched. There's always plenty more where they came from. And now a full engagement on Northern side here. Preventing the Tower of Loving from being rebuilt. And just instantly teleporting where the moment they even sniff these war beasts are coming. Mighty fine stuff. And it, it's, it's the correct unit composition, I have to say. I think this is the correct one. As is usually is with the late game Dark Eldar. You build up your close combat units, you send them in, you murder everything after taking a healthy dosing, a dosage of Columbian marching powder from space. But, I mean, the repositioning with the Falcon Grav Tanks, the repositioning as well with the teleporting from the Warp Spiders, the killing of the of the Dark Elder economy, preventing them from keeping that assault on the go at all times. I think it's slow, but surely getting to the Dark Elder, whittling them down. Also got that, taking old victory on the gold. Oh, for some reason, why have you captured... Oh, hold on. All right, there we go. Yep. And the Dark Elder, they say no. They, they've done one single poof of purple to signify them leaving. But yeah, like, 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 like I say, I think, I think the Dark Elder had the right idea just didn't quite have the economy to be able to build them up. And that one singular Falcon Grav Tank with those rangers, wherever the rangers are, the rangers are still alive. Have oh, they been killed? Maybe dying for one last engagement round over on this side. But certainly, they did their business and all that stuff. So nice one. Okay, cool. If you want to spot channel, have a look at the old Patreon. One pound a month gets you watched a game a week. And there is also a Discord, where Discord things happen. Links in the description, as always. My name's Mr. Lunchark. Pleasure as always, never short. And I'll see you in a bit. Peace.